So guys, as you can see here at the moment, we're just prepping all the cage up now. The lid of the cage is over here. What will happen is we set these screws so the lid doesn't drop all the way down. We're now about half an hour, 20 minutes away from gluing up. Once we do that, we'll do a time match to show you everything. We're now getting ready to glue up on this horizontal landing handrail. So what we've got over here, we've got the thin laminates of oak, two and a half, three mil thick. Got all the cramps organized, set them within four or five mil of clamping tight to the actual distance that we need on the uh, handrail itself. We've nicely color coded this all the way through here. We've got absolutely loads and loads of two mil laminates, three mil laminates. We'll obviously cascamite glue all this together. These strips here, well, actually all bend around on this jig all the way around all the way around here all the way around here and we've obviously got it all prepped and ready the reason we put these blocks in is when all the glue comes out of this handrail and then oozes down here we can clean it up really easy it would have put the glue and the handrail straight onto this ply and the thing is with structural cascamite is so strong so it's really important that we lift it off by an inch got all this then taped to help it stop it sticking to the mdf the other thing is make sure you get really well prepped now so we've got the mixing tool we've got the actual gun to fix the bolts here we've got the casco mark we've got the extra water we've got the packers we've got the clamps that we need we've got additional clamps here that i'll actually locate here and then screw through screw through because it's really difficult to clamp through here because of the g clamps are so big we've actually designed this clamping system here which is a nice bit of off cut of oak that we've got and we've got seven of them and what will happen is we've numbered them up and then we've made sure that the fitting that we're going to be screwing them with which are these fittings here actually go through the hole really easy because it's really important that that does that but then what we have done is then we've piloted these holes so we can make sure that we can still get a really good bite with the screw that we're going to drive into here but if we hadn't have piloted this it would split this CLS so it's really important that you pre-pilot these because it being such a short length so what will happen is we'll cascomite each of those laminates and then obviously start clamping from this position and work away steadily across this round here Obviously with all these laminates it'll get very difficult here but between me and Pete we'll be able to soon get this sorted out and you'll see it on the time lapse. like to leave all of my gluing up for at least two days because then I know that I'm gonna have a real good positive connection adhesion with the glue and the timber that lovely curve of the handrail that's gonna go onto the landing we have really got meant on the clamping because it's really important that you get it well clamped you can see the glues oozed out we've cleaned as much glue off as we can and now we're going to deconstruct the jig and fingers crossed all of the handrail is stuck beautifully now this process of molding this handrail is going to be exactly the same as the pitch handrail so i'll show you how we do this and what cutters that we use and how we go about it okay guys So as you can see here now guys, we've started to clean the handrail up. We've been very lucky to be able to get this actually through the surface planer. What you have to do is sort of twist it round as we get it through the surface planer so you can see all the pitch marks on there, but it's getting it nice and flat. 
Just got it to the right thickness of the handrail, which is really, really cool. And you can see the other side, it's really nice and flat as well. You can just see a little bit of the glue line there, but that'll all be taken out with the groove and the mold. And then what we've done is we've got the belt sander in here, clean that up so we've got a nice running surface because we're gonna put a couple of cutters on this now with the router, which you'll see. This will produce the mold for the handrail because even that's the start of it, obviously then we run further molds to get it exactly where we want it to be. Right guys, so the tools that we need to produce this handrail. So we've got a lovely square section here now, 70 by 85 mil. And what we've got here, the cutters, we've got a lovely big round cutter here, half inch collet. We then got the bottom half of the handrail. You can see this is gonna have like a B detail on the bottom here, isn't it, and sloping in. So the top half is gonna have this lovely massive round on it here, you can see on both sides. I like to use bearing cutters because it makes life a lot easier when you're running molds. We'll flip the handrail upside down. The bead will be on the bottom part of this section here. The other thing is, uh, it's really quite important to mention, make sure you mark your top and your bottom of your handrail, because obviously you don't want to machine it upside down, because then you'll have a left-handed handrail. On this one at the moment, the handrail runs all the way along this way, and then curves then into the north post here. So this is gonna be the top. So I'm just gonna mark on their top. So I don't get confused when I'm machining it. I've got to think to myself, right, if I run that curve, How's that gonna then affect then this router here going on? So I'll actually probably looking at it, doesn't matter which one I run, we're still gonna have a, a bearing line there because you can see the top of that cutter and where that cutter's actually going to finish. If I actually mark it on here like this, so that represents the bottom of this cutter coming all the way through to that point. So in other words, the bottom of this cutter it's gonna to come to this point. So then when I run this other mold like this, I know it's then gonna run on a true point. It's not gonna dive in on me, so it'll give me the true distance that I'm after. Sometimes you've gotta be careful that if you run a certain cutter first and it takes a chunk of material away, what would happen when the bearing runs on the material? It just gives you a different shape. So it's really important to check where your bearings are gonna go with when the handrail, how it's gonna form. Okay, guys. Now this process is exactly the same as I've done with the twisted handrail, which runs up the rake of the actual staircase. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show any of the machining of that. That's why I wanted to show the machining on this curved landing handrail. But it's exactly the same process. The only thing is I couldn't actually put the rake handrail on the planer so I had to hand plane it square you can see this is pretty much nice and square so it gives me a decent block surface decent bit of timber to work with the other thing is you can see the way the grains running on this as well so I'll bite away at this taking small chunks out at a time I won't go for the full blow straight away because I don't want it spelching out of me and splitting any I'll just take my time and you'll see that whole process now round of the handrail on the left and the right hand side so we machine this this looks really really nice I'm really happy you seen earlier we had a bit of a spout so that's why I sometimes back cut on the blade just to stop that because it really does help and that's why I take off small amounts as well as I'm routing it's really really key that you take off small amounts at a time instead of going for the big full blow so uh, but it turned out really really nice I've had no major disasters with it I'm just gonna machine this last bit up here as well just to uh, finish that off, so I'll loop back this section. Just round to this last bit. Okay. 
So the next part of the process of doing the handrail is actually the bottom part of the handrail. So we're going to use this cutout that's going to produce there where your fingers tuck underneath here. So you can imagine at this point here, this cutter will take a load of this material out and then give us a lovely bead detail so your fingers will actually sit on it. It just really makes the handrail feel beautiful. Yeah, and it would be easy if I had just extraction from my router, but as ever, I broke my just extractor from my router some time ago and I'm still waiting for it to come in. So hopefully it'll be here this week or next week. There we go. So I can now machine the bottom of this hand wrap. And you can see why having this lovely and flat makes it so much easier to work the router. Because if this was all over the place or I've got loads of glue on it still, wouldn't we get a lovely clean line? Because it allows my router to be able to slide them down there nice and smoothly. So first thing I'm gonna do is set the router guide, plunge that down, then set my clip there. Set that to the depth I want. I'm just going to do it slightly below. What I will do is I'll check on my curved piece of hand I've done. You see that little detail there, six mil. So I'll repeat that over here now. Set this lock off here, tight off so it can't go any deeper, can't move. I know it's absolutely spot on the mark every time now. And what I'll do is. I don't take it out all in one hit because then it's not going to spelch the oak and then plus it just gives me a nicer finish so it's really important you just take your time once I've passed it once or twice I'll then go in and do the whole pass which will be the final cut so you've just seen me go pass once the handrail and look at it now it's absolutely beautiful with that mold on doesn't it, ring all the way around here well obviously we've got a lot of shaping to do but oh it feels like a handrail already you know it just feels really really nice so once that's all sanded and finished and planed in with the spoke shaves and things like that that'd be absolutely perfect all these see these pitch marks here all the way through we'll rub all those out so it'll be nice and clean it'll be absolutely beautiful when it's all finished but uh, that is the process of molding your handrail, whether it be curved or like the handrail over there, whether it's going to be pitched. This is the one on the right, exactly the same process, just taking small amounts off at the time. But you can actually see how nice that looks now, and nice bit of curved handrail. So. Really, really pleased with that, guys. So guys, as you can see here now, I'm starting to play in the handrail in here, you see? I've been working on this one as well. Now, one of the things I actually do when I'm planing the handrail in, I literally get a board like this and sit it nice and flat. Now, you can see just here, lovely and tight all the way around, lovely and tight all the way around, but look, I've got a half a mil gap, you see it there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the block plane and just feather that little bit off just to make sure I get it nice and tight so when it goes up to the knoll, it's, it's lovely and tight and it looks really, really cool. That's really good now, guys. I'm really, really happy with that. It looks nice and flat all the way through, so. When this connects to the null, it'll be a really nice positive connection. Lovely and flat, no gaps, which is really important. Get the handrail bolt through here and then I can do a good connection there.
So guys, what we're doing now is we're putting in the handrail bolt systems that we use when we put in any kind of handrail, whether it being oak, softwood, mahogany, anything like that really guys. So as you can see here, I have a handrail coming onto this connection. I have a handrail coming on to this connection because this is like a corner post and then I have a handrail that goes up to the wall. So basically what happens is you uh, get this handrail bolt and then you thread this part of the nut into here. Now the one key thing to do with this, you need to make sure that the drill that you choose for this is just slightly smaller than the thread. So in other words, if you can imagine taking the thread away from this bolt and then actually the shank of the bolt itself, that's the size of the drill, that's what you need because then that way you know that the thread's gonna really bite into the grain of the handrail, which is really, really important. And the way to set that up is, is really, really easy, the way I do it anyway, is get a, uh, a couple of nuts like this and all I'll do is I'll put a, a nut on there like that. I'll put a washer on as well because it helps lock off. I put another nut on like that. So then I get them together. I then get two 13 mil spanners. I put that there and now the washer obviously holds that which is really easy and nice. And then I just tighten them up and get them as tight and tight as you can. So that then is now ready then to screw into your null post. And what we do then is get a half inch socket and then you can actually then just wind that in then into the actual null. So it makes it really easy. Sometimes this will unloosen, so you'll have to re-tighten it because obviously different woods put more resistance. Like if you get a hard wood, it will give you more resistance when you're winding it in. So the main thing is just really pinch these back up again and carry on putting it into the actual null post itself. Once I've drilled my hole, what I actually do is I countersink them there, countersink them there, same on that one there. And the reason I do this is because uh, I don't want this timber here to sort of raise up slightly and hold the handrail off. I want it to fit nice and tightly. The other thing is I mark all the base plates of my handrail where it's actually going to go. So if you can imagine the bottom of this handrail, I literally mark it. That point there uh, is in a representation of this point here. I then mark up 25 mil to the center. Then I literally drill my hole and then put the handrail bolt in. The next part of that is you have to then make sure that you then prep and get your handrail right. You look at the size of this threaded bar here and what you have to do is you have to make sure that the drill that you then drill is only literally about a couple of mil bigger than this threaded handrail bolt here. So basically what will happen I get a drill that's just slightly bigger. When you get the threaded part of that, I just make sure this is only slightly bigger. And the reason you do that is because then you can actually then feed that bolt in there, lovely and comfortable. And the thing I always do is I always make sure this measurement from here to here, I like to have at least 35 mil from there to there to the edge of the hole because I just like to make sure there's a good chunk of timber there. These handrail bolts are three inches long. I always find these are really, really good. In fact, they might be four inches long. Let me just have a look. So these are actually, yeah, there you go, 90 mil long. So they're the ones I use because I like to make sure there's enough timber here. And what happens when that projects through and it goes into the hole there like that, it then comes through this other side inside here. And what you have to do then is you then put your nut and washer onto there, but it's really, really key. You can see how this is nice and round. What you need to do is make sure you square off this face here, because if you don't square off this face across here, when you come to tighten with your nut and washer, the nut will then curl, which will then stop you tightening the nut up really tight. So it's really important that you get a nice sharp chisel and square this off. The other thing you've got to do is to make sure that you can get your spanner to the full depth. So make sure when you're drilling this, you drill it deep enough so you can still get your spanner on like this really comfortably. So it allows you then to turn the nut because sometimes if you don't drill this deep enough, you won't be able to get your spanner on properly. And that's really key. Okay guys. So guys, as you can see here now, I've actually squared up the hole beautifully now. So when that handrail bar goes through, I know that I can get a really good connection with my washer and sit nice and square. And it's gonna pull the handrail up nice and tight to the null then. You think it makes it easy for me to get my spanner in as well. So it just makes a better job, a little bit more work, but just make a, a better connection. Saves it all the hassle then once you've got all the glue and the spanner, then not being able to get onto the nut properly because of the curling washer, because that's what happens. So as you can see here, guys, what I do is I set the spindles up here 
to the right desired handrail height of 905 mil. And I've done the same up here as well. Got the spindle set at the height that I need to, so the handrail, when it fits in, it all fits in nice and beautiful and parallel. We've done all the curve work here now to make sure that the landing space is going to uh, all come together nicely this weekend. Starting to get the spindles in over here as well at the moment. And if I go through here, Pete's working on the curved handrail here now, starting to form in shape at all. Doing a really good job of that. You can see now by the end of the detail there, it's looking really, really nice. It's starting to come together. All we've got to do now is just put a groove on the bottom here for the spindles and then obviously put all the fillets. But uh, Pete's probably got about another half now sorting all this out. Really coming together now, isn't it, mate? It's looking really good. Yeah, really good. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. Also check out our Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn pages as well. Definitely get on there and have a look. Have a great week. All of you stay safe and look after yourselves. Take care guys.